Which fantasy stars should you be buying low on in your dynasty leagues? All that and more on today's Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Today's episode of Locked On Dynasty is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick between two and five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED ON. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Welcome to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I am your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Matt, we're three weeks in. How's it going? It's going well, man. I, I got to say, some of my redraft teams are really struggling, but my dynasty teams are hanging in there pretty tough. How about you? Uh, yeah, I would say the same, actually, <laughs> the mm -hmm. exact same. Uh, I think we've had a lot of uh, a lot of disappointing players leading yeah. to some of those poor records, uh, a lot of uh, up and down players. We've seen some big weeks followed by quiet weeks here just through through three games. We're going to talk about some of those disappointing players later in this episode. As we always do on Tuesdays, we're talking dynasty transactions. And if you've joined us for the last couple of Tuesdays, it's it's been a tough waiver uh, waiver wire segment. I, I've said this uh, on Twitter and other places. It's just the worst year for waivers that I can really remember as far as having uh, those those targets that can really make an impact on your dynasty team. And uh, I got a little pushback that uh, maybe that's a good thing. You know, we shouldn't be complaining that we don't have these out of nowhere performances or we don't have these uh, serious injuries leading to uh, leading to players becoming relevant out of nowhere. And we certainly had some some injuries pop up. But uh, I, I think for the most part, we're still uh, I would say we're still less than a normal year. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a good thing that we have this bad waiver wire through three weeks. What, what do you think, Matt? Well, uh, there was a conversation that Brian Peacock and I were having on our show Monday and I started digging into it more since we recorded and this might shock people. Cause I was startled when I found this out that exactly half the league is averaging under 20 offensive points per league for, per game, you know? So mm the ball's just not finding the end zone as much as usual. I mean, points are down across the league right now. I'm sure it'll correct itself, but I think that's part of it is there's just not as many fantasy points to go around because offenses are struggling across the league. Yeah, certainly been a, a weird year uh, through three games. Week two was fun. Uh, week one and, and three just kind of felt weird. We do have mm -hmm. some options, though, if you're uh, working your yeah. waiver wire and you definitely should be. We're going to run through these pretty quickly because later in the show, we want to talk about some players that you might be buying low on players that are off to slow starts, uh, but we're not ready to give up on them quite yet. Uh, waiver wire targets for this week. Looks like Mac Jones is going to miss some time. High ankle sprain. Uh, Brian Hoyer's next in line there in New England. That feels kind of gross. I mean, we've seen that story before. And, and even Mac Jones was was not performing very well. And, and that offense yeah. was, uh, was kind of one to avoid. So this is super flex desperation move only. Uh, but Hoyer would be an option in that situation. Kind of some interesting running backs this week, some due to injury, some due to uh, just playing time and and more and more uh, committee attacks from the backfield. Uh, Jordan Mason is the RB2 in San Francisco. Jeff Wilson continues to be the guy there, uh, but we know, unfortunately, about his injury. Right. Yeah, we know about <laughs> yeah. his injury history as well. Jordan Mason, the uh, the undrafted rookie, grab him if you haven't already. Samaj P. Ryan, uh, this is a this is a playing time issue. He continues to eat into Joe Mixon's workload. Actually, led the team in rushing, I believe, in week two. 
caught a touchdown as well. Uh, the others uh, are, are injury related. Ty Chandler, rookie in Minnesota. We saw Dalvin Cook with a shoulder injury. Sounds like they're hoping he doesn't miss time. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Craig Reynolds is the third stringer in Detroit. DeAndre Swift, also a shoulder injury. I think he's going to miss time. Jamal Williams is going to be the man there oh, yeah. in Detroit, but Reynolds will see some time. And, and then Justice Hill, this is a guy we, we all had on our dynasty rosters two, three, four years ago and, and finally getting his shot. It's kind of a crowded backfield in Baltimore as it always is. Dobbins is back, but Hill is getting his playing time and, and playing ahead of Kenyon Drake playing ahead of, um, uh, Mike Davis as well. So yes, yes, I was just, to think just to still probably worth the roster spot, Matt Mason, P Ryan Chandler, Craig Reynolds, justice Hill. If you're throwing some waiver bucks on one of those guys in a dynasty league, who's it going to be? Um, probably P Ryan. Um, I, oh, okay. I think he has a, a defined role as the third down back now. And I think he's one injury away from being an every week starter. Not that he's great, but I think he'd monopolize that backfield if Mixon were to go yeah, down. True. Um, Mason, though, I was about to say, I'll bet the buck that Mason starts a game this year for the Niners. That's just how that that, that group works, you know. And you want to have it. Him if it feels does. like it. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it. We've we've seen some injuries there already. Notably, uh, I think we talked about Mason even last week on this segment. Uh, Mason would be my guy for that same reason. I just feel yeah, like yeah. he's going to get a start or two at least for that uh, 49ers backfield. Let's move over to the wide receivers quickly. Have a few names here. Uh, Zay Jones, uh, another good game. He's been up and down, but had a nice week three. Mac Hollins took advantage of some playing time with Hunter Renfro out. He had a big game. Equinemia St. Brown. It, it's it's tough to recommend any Chicago Bear uh, yeah, pretty right. Pass catcher, they don't throw especially. The ball. <laughs> right. right, right. But uh, St. Brown has, has had a role there. And uh, if your waiver wire is deep enough, if your league is deep enough, sometimes that's all that matters. Devontae Parker and LaVisca Chenault, a couple of veterans who uh, really have been left for dead. And both of those guys had nice week threes. I'm not quite convinced that uh, they'll keep it up, but, you know, benefit of the doubt. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Ben Skoranek, LA Rams led the team in receiving this week. That was a little, a little bit of a surprise. And DeAndre Carter, Carter's a guy who was already playing because of the Keenan Al uh, Keenan Allen injury. Now Jalen Guyton has a torn ACL. He's done for the year, and uh, I think it's safe to assume we'll continue to see Carter in that offense. So same question, Matt. These uh, seven wide receivers. If you're picking one. Dynasty wise, who's it going to be? I wouldn't mind. I still have some love for LaVisca. You know, I mean, just that okay. his talents, I think, are real. What's I would that? say he's also the one least likely to be on the waiver wire, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think people him. are st probably still kind of hanging on to him. If you're in a shallower league, maybe he's out there. Uh, but I'm with you. He, uh, I've, I realize this. He has more receiving yards than DJ Moore on the season. That's so that's. Yeah, it's a little a little disappointing for for different reasons. Um, um, the other two though are Zay Jones because they like him. It doesn't matter that I do. They gave him money and they throw him the football. And I think yeah. Devontae Parker stands out as just the best player of this group, and probably he might be the least likely to be on the waiver wire. Yeah, honestly, I would not have even uh, thought to include Parker on this list, except he got he got dropped in two of my leagues last week, and nobody even wow. picked him up. So huh. uh, those were pretty pretty deep leagues as well. So he he could be out there again, especially in uh, leagues that are a little more shallow. A couple other guys that uh, may or may not be on the waiver wire, depending on the size of your league. Tyler Conklin, Jets tight end, uh, off to a great start. He's a tight end one on the season through three games. Uh, and, and Foster Moreau in Vegas. He's the backup, of course, to Darren Waller, but uh, we've seen playing time go Moreau's way lately. Uh, maybe a, a guy worth stashing. I like Moreau a lot as a player. Um, Conklin, I'm not suggesting it's going to keep up, but he needs to be in every league. His usage is really, really high, and I don't know if that'll happen when Wilson comes back or not, but Conklin 
needs to be in every league, in my opinion. Totally agree. Totally agree. <coughs> Matt, when we come back, as I mentioned earlier, we will talk about some players who are off to slow starts, uh, and we'll decide if we should be buying low on these players. Let me tell you guys about prize picks, though, first. I've, I've mentioned it several times on this podcast. They're a good buddy of the Locked On Network. And I've had great success at using prize picks, to be honest with you. And what I love is there's really just a number, and I can avoid it if I want. If I don't like it, I don't play against anybody else. If I think they're going to go over the number, I hit it. If I think they're going to go under, I hit it. But if it's not something that's attracted me, I just stay away. Because what you do is you pick between two and five players, then really just want to know if they score more or less than their prize pick projection. Then you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry, which is great too. I like that you're not competing against other people. It's just you versus projection. So someone that knows less than us ends up getting lucky. It doesn't hurt you. Um, and they have everything. I obviously stick to the NFL, but NBA, uh, college football, golf, hockey, baseball, I mean, soccer, WNBA, esports, cricket disc golf I, I think that if you were a disc golf expert i think you could make a fortune uh entries can be made in like 60 seconds or less it's super easy what i love safe fast withdrawals you know that that takes no time at all um it's operational right now in 30 states including canada so here's what you do go download the prize pick apps app or go to prizepick.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks gives you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Pretty easy. So don't forget to use our promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Bucks. All right, Matt, let's talk some dynasty trade targets. We always try to mix in those trade targets along with our waiver wire options on Tuesdays. Uh, I want to focus on some players that are struggling through these first three weeks. And let's start at the running back position, uh, Travis Etienne. Uh, I think James Robinson has been one of the big stories of the year so far. Uh, not only is he uh, does he look healthy, but he... Uh, really looks better than ever. I believe he's the RB2 through three games uh, in, in PPR leagues. Just a great start for him. And, of course, that has been bad news for Travis Etienne. I know that's a player that you and I both liked quite a bit. Yeah. Heading into the season, we saw a big role for him. Uh, of course, he also coming off uh, an injury that cost him all of last season. Etienne currently is the RB35. He has 26 carries for 112 yards, eight catches for 81 yards. Those numbers are all through three games. Um, wh where do you stand on Travis Etienne uh, uh, and his value? Is this a player that you still believe in? Obviously still young. Uh, the, the team is certainly headed in the right direction. Big win in week oh, three. Yeah. I mean, this, this suddenly looks like a team that could win their division. What do you think about Etienne right now? I mean, as a player, my thoughts don't change at all. I think he's going to be a very useful piece. Uh, he has some Percy Harvin to him, um, mm -hmm. a relationship with Lawrence. But I'll be honest, uh, I kind of forgot how good James Robinson is. I mean, he's a very good football player. Urban Meyer didn't seem to think so, which yeah. makes me feel even better about my opinion. <laughs> um, is I don't think he's going away or that this is you know fluky for Robinson. You mentioned he looks better than ever, 100%. He's a handful to bring down. If you believe that the Jags are not for real and are going to be playing from behind a lot, I think ATN's a really good buy. Otherwise, he's a hold. But I think they're going to win the division, and I think that they're very much for real. I, I kind of mentioned this a little bit in our waiver wire segment earlier with, with Samaje P. Ryan eating into Mixon's work. And, I mean, this is not a new, uh, a new idea that committee backfields are taking over. But it looks like that's becoming more and more true across the league. Uh, situations where you had two running backs sharing, now suddenly you have three three backs sharing the workload. Uh, and a lot of teams where they seem to rely on, on one guy for the most part, now they're using two. Um, and I, I think that's... Uh, you know, that that's a big issue a trend, for... Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a big issue for fantasy managers. I think it makes those top elite guys uh, like Jonathan Taylor worth even more. Um, 
but I, I think it's just it's just kind of a reality. I don't know that that's going to change anytime soon with the running back position, uh, and ultimately it's going to hurt the value of guys like Travis Etienne, who, as you said, it, it could be a committee back or just or the one B in his, uh, for his team for the next couple of years. Yeah, and he's talented. I'm sure he'll have big games. He'll have big long touchdowns here and there, but he's gonna have some clunkers too. I do have some recent trades. Uh, so it sounds like you're interested in in targeting ETN. I want to see if these trades change your mind. Uh, first one, and, and by the way, these are all coming from the Dynasty Trade Finder on Dynasty League Football. These are all actual trades from Dynasty Leagues hosted on my Fantasy League. And these have all, all taken place within the past two weeks. So uh, these are not trades we're pulling from, from the summer or anything like that. First one, Travis Etienne for Ramondre Stevenson and a second round rookie pick. What are your thoughts there? See, I think I'm more of a hold on ATN than a target him. Um, I'm a big okay. Stevenson fan. And if you're going to give me the pick, I'll take that side as well. Okay. So Stevenson in the second, you'd be on that side. Uh, this one is, is certainly interesting. Yeah. Travis Etienne for James Robinson. One for one, no picks. Involved. I think I'd rather have Robinson. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I think I'd rather have okay. Robinson. You know that uh, it, running backs are short lived. We know that. I think you just hop on this Robinson train and ride it as long as you can and be happy. And Travis Etienne plus a 2024 first rounder for Debo Samuel. I want Debo. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Uh, so you, you thought you were a hold. Maybe you're a sell if those yeah, are maybe. the. The, the current prices. Uh, let's talk about a wide receiver here. Allen Robinson, uh, another player that I was super high on. I loved the move uh, to LA. Uh, I, I saw, you know, I saw big things for a Rob and through three games, it, it just has not paid off at all. He's the wide receiver 67 on the season has seven catches on just 12 targets in those three games. 88 total yards and one touchdown. A very frustrating stat line. Uh, not a player that you can that you can start. Just can't use him right now. Uh, where where are we A -Rob. with A Rob? I own him in all my. It's one of my reasons my redraft isn't going so well. Yeah, I started him yes. three weeks in a row, and like every every one of my leagues loved him coming. You know, this year something's missing. Um, he should have had another touchdown this past mm -hmm. week. Didn't. Yep. He's frustrating for sure. You wonder. I think we can't forget that he was not good last year and he's not young. I mean, are we starting right. to worry that he's a declining player despite the camp news and all the good stuff around him? I feel like that offense is missing something. The running game's not clicking. Um, I think it gets better, but I you can't start him anymore, you know. Let's check the prices on a Rob and see if that changes your mind. Allen Robinson for Ryan Tannehill in a super flex league. I mean, talk about a player who looks like Robinson. he's done. Ryan Tannehill fits that bill. Um, I think I'm probably Tannehill might Robinson. only start like 10 more games in his career. <laughs> that, that might be generous. Actually. Yeah, we've already right, seen, right. we've already seen Malik Willis get some game time. Uh, I'm taking Robinson there. Allen Robinson and a second rounder for his teammate, Cam Akers. A Rob and a second for Akers. I'll take the pick because I really don't want either player right now, but the second is kind of intriguing. And then this I don't is know if probably, Akers is really the starter. Yeah, this is probably, probably the going rate for Allen Robinson. It's just A Rob for a future second. I think I'm holding him for that. Okay. But. I obviously could change my mind when, you know, the draft rolls around after this year, you know, and you see all the receivers out there. He's a year older. Um, I think I'm holding him right now for that, though. Matt, let's talk about a couple of other guys here uh, that are that could be considered possible by low targets. We've already mentioned this name a couple times here. DJ Moore, wide receiver in Carolina. He's the wide receiver 59. Uh, oddly enough, he has a, a, almost the exact same stat line as the guy we just talked about, Allen Robinson. He also has seven catches, 88 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, 
you know, this is a Baker Mayfield issue. I think this is a Matt rule issue. I think DJ Moore probably outlast both of those guys. I think they're probably both gone right. from Carolina <laughs> before he is. That's uh, what you're hoping. But it still doesn't make it doesn't make 2022 any easier. And uh, you know, before we know it, DJ Moore is going to be one of these guys that we're looking to trade off for for a younger version. What could tell have been? me? Tell me where you're at with DJ Moore. I think you have to hold him. I mean, his production is awful. I think he's unstartable. I think Baker's yeah. terrible. I think the offense is terrible. But I still love this player, and I'm holding him with the hopes that he is a stud in 2023. Recent trades involving DJ Moore. Uh, this is uh, this one's fun. It's a couple of my favorites. DJ Moore for Elijah Moore, even up one for one. Who you got, DJ or Elijah? I love both too. Like you want them both on your favorite team. I don't like either one situation. That yeah, it's just a flat out coin flip for me. I, I don't have a preference. I think Elijah's uh, three or four years younger, so I'm going with that side just mm -hmm. based on that alone. But you're right; they they do have similar concerns. DJ Moore and Kadarius Tony. I think this this maybe gives you an idea where the value is right now. DJ Moore and Kadarius Tony for Curtis Samuel and Tony Pollard. Yeah, I think that's way too low because I still think Tony has value. I know Samuel is destroying Tony this year, but I'm not sure that they're much different. And I'm not doing DJ Moore for Pollard. Yeah, again, I, I don't. It feels tough to give up. To, uh, to, I'm sorry to give up DJ Moore for that type yeah. of return, which feels right. like a little more short term. Um, but again, I think that's a representation of where the value is right now. Last one, DJ Moore and a second rounder for Jamison Williams and Christian Watson. Couple that I'm doing, I although I don't adore Watson, but I adore Williams. And I, okay. Yeah. So I think I will do that. Yes. Last one. Let's, let's squeeze this one in Darnell Mooney. This might be the worst one. Worst uh, one wide receiver. 113, 112 wide receivers have outscored uh, Darnell Mooney, 11 targets on the season, four catches on the season, just 27 yards. I cannot believe this. Uh, I, I already know your thoughts on this one. You and I both have been in, in lockstep on Darnell Mooney that uh, we like the player, but we don't view him as a wide receiver one. Uh, and, and yeah, throw in the, the fact that the bears evidently don't trust Justin Fields to even throw the ball. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a player to avoid. Darnell Mooney and a first rounder for Devonte Smith and a fourth. Wow. I don't like giving up that first, but I, th right, I think the value is right. on the Smith side. Yeah. I lean that way too. My take on Mooney super quick is hold him until next year when he's the two and they have Smith and Jigba or somebody like that. And I think his value will go up. Um, but uh, he's not close to Devonta Smith. Yeah, not not even close. Uh, I like no. I like this type of trade, Darnell Mooney, in a second for Darren Waller. Uh, although I think we're starting to see uh, we're starting to see Waller take a step back as well. I would take the Waller side there, and and this yeah. last one is just it's just sad. If this yeah, is that's uh, kind of if pathetic, this is yeah. where the value is, Mooney for Tyler Algier and Khalil Shakir. Couple uh, a couple of rookies that we liked in the late third or fourth round. That's what I say. Third, fourth Just, round pick type guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take the return. Stash them. Right. Exactly. If that's the return you're getting, just keep Darnell Mooney for that. He doesn't have to go, folks. You know. Absolutely. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Now make your second listen the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. That will do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Remember to follow the show at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL, and I'm Ryan MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked on Dynasty.